Greetings, unsettled souls. You can flip the screen around. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct fuse. I got some people uh, looking for us here at uh, to at the correct fuse to show. And let me show you what. Let me show you this real quick. Let me show you how wonderful Google is here. We're gonna go to Google Hangouts here. We're gonna hit Start Broadcast. Oh, look at that. It won't start broadcast. Look at that. Failed to go live. Now, I've been talking about this to my regular viewers for some time. There is some kind of BS going on with the correct views and Google. This is not a war. Thank you, Christelle. This is not a war that is in my head. Friends, I'm Sam IB reporting for The Media Speaks. Um, to my live viewers, of which I see you watching me try to go live, I'm going to say, you saw what happened, I didn't do it. Alright friends, I'm going to go with the HD version, and we're going to go ahead and post it on both. Friends, Infowars.com, Planet Infowars by Kim M. Pollenville Dying Starfish article never once mentions Fukushima or radiation. I wanted to do this story, friends, because I covered a couple of uh, issues ago on the uh, installments ago on this show. They're finding birth defects like spinal bifida and things like it in massive numbers, way above what is the norm in Washington. But never once did they mention Fukushima, even though I've been begging you all not to live anywhere near the coast of Alaska, Washington, Oregon, California, or any of Hawaii. Um, they never once mentioned that, hey, you know, the Fukushima meltdown, the potential meltdown or melt-throughs, nah, nothing to worry about here. Well, we know about the starfish, and we know that there's been a problem with them before. If you don't know, look up the correct view starfish. This won't be the only one that comes up. I've done this prior. But we do have new and, unfortunately, rather startling news on it. Incredibly, a San Luis Obispo, California mainstream newspaper, the Tribune, published a 408-word article Tuesday about the widespread epidemic of dying starfish in coastal tide pools, and not one of those words was Fukushima or radiation. The cause of the disease, quote, is an unidentified pathogen that causes the animals to look deflated or have unnatural twisting to its arms. The disease then progresses to a bacterial infection that often leads to loss of arms and death. End quote. The University of California San Jose website that the Tribune linked to for more information, as it says, also did not mention Fukushima or radiation. Quote, as of the summer of 2013, there is evidence that we are on the onset of another wasting event and one that is particularly troubling because of its sparse extent. Marine monitoring groups have documented wasting in Piaster Orchias from Alaska through California, and quote, I'm particularly troubled too because the author writes, a simple search for a dying starfish Fukushima brought up this 2011 report from Yale. It says, with contaminated water from Japan's crippled Fukushima nuclear complex, keep in mind this is 2011 from Yale, continuing to pour into the Pacific, scientists are concerned about how that radioactivity might affect marine life. Although the ocean's capacity to dilute, which is to pollute, radiation is huge, Designs are that nuclear isotopes are already moving up the local food chain. And this was from Elizabeth Grossman. The name of the article is Radioactivity in the Ocean Diluted but Far from Harmless. How many times have uh, you been eating fish or whatever because then the news is telling you it's fine? Well, not if you're listening to this show, you're not eating it. Grossman mentions a previous massive starfish die-off in the White Sea in the 90s which was vigor variously attributed by Russian scientists to pollution or nuclear contamination. And given that thousands of tons of radioactivity contaminated water, radioact excuse me, radioacti radioactively contaminated water, very easy for me to say, clearly, from the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant are pouring directly into the ocean, Grossman expressed acute alarm and contended that scientists agree that governments of Japan 
the U.S. and other nations on the Pacific Rim need to ramp up studies of how far this contamination might spread and in what concentrations. Why does that matter? Because fast forward to 2014 and now we're seeing some of it. We're seeing uh, what Mikhail Thalen uh, about his conjoined whales, which we've never seen before. We're seeing massive die-offs and dead uh, sea life in the ocean floor, such as we've never seen before. So this is a really big deal. Concentrations of cesium-137 in seawater are 10 to 300 kilometers off the Japanese coast from March 23rd to March 30th. It says, through the vastness of, though the vastness of the ocean it has the capacity to dilute nuclear contamination, signs of spreading radioactive material are being found off Japan, including the discovery of elevated concentrations of radioactive cesium and iodine, in small fish several dozen miles south of Fukushima, and high levels of radioactivity in seawater 25 miles offshore. <clears throat> Elizabeth Grossman again, uh, same article. Also, in that, Grossman also quotes a person named Ken Busler. He's a senior scientist in marine chemistry at the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Massachusetts, saying, given that the Fukushima nuclear power plant is in fact on the ocean, and with leaks and runoff directly to the stream, the impacts on the ocean will exceed those of Chernobyl, which were hundreds of miles from any sea. Uh, look up any map, that is actually very, very true. In the meantime, as recently as December 2013, that's just a couple months ago, people, San Fran uh, Chronicle states that UCSC biologists <clears throat> and scientists from various other universities are looking for marine biotoxins and viruses and exploring a variety of possible sources, including radiation from the debris that washed across the Pacific Ocean. Uh, it says, we're not throwing anything out yet, uh, Pete Redmoney had said. And it says, there's something going on in the water. Unfortunately, we're not sure what it is, but we really don't have the ability to say what it isn't. This is Michael Murray, Director of Veterinary Services at Monterey Bay Aquarium. And of course, the article says, <clears throat> something's going on in the water. He's got to be kidding, right? And it goes on to talk about all the things that we already know are in the water. They, 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 they don't know what's causing it. They do know what's causing it. They know exactly what's causing it. That's why we're seeing... <coughs> excuse me. That's why we're seeing the die-offs that we were always reporting on. And that's why we're seeing more and more stories um, on the starfish. This is a real mess. Uh, Christelle, my behind-the-scenes queen. I don't have my red light on, so I want to make sure I'm recording, because I think I just lost a little light. We are recording? Yes. We are recording. All right. Friends, thank you, my dear. Uh, Michael Snyder, economic collapse. 29% of all U.S. adults under the age of 35 are living with their parents. Uh, this is not good. Um, you always hear about the slacker generation. Um, I'm 41, so I was part of the slacker generation. A lot of me and my friend Tony Gaspar used to talk about this. I wonder where he are. Tony, if you're listening. Um... Slackers, most people we knew were working two jobs and starving to death. And this was the beginning. I don't think there's really been an opportunity in this country since about midway through the baby boomers. Because I can say for one, I've never seen anything that resembles a, an opportunity. Um, I'm an author who can never get anything read. Notice I didn't say rejected. No, I'm just not rich enough to get them read. Um... Bands n n never had that Richie agent to get you listened to. If there's never been anything like an opportunity, again, passing time never gets rejection letters because we don't have a rich agent, so our music never gets listened to at all. It could be the best thing ever. They have no idea because they didn't listen to it. Um, and it's true like this with areas in science, uh, not just music and art and writing like I was talking about. It's true all over the board. Uh, even fire sciences, there's been a huge, a huge um, underappreciation of our fire staff that we may actually need someday. It's happening all over America because our country is in the process of dying. That's why I'm doing these videos. Uh, and here's yet another study of how we don't have any opportunities for anyone anymore. Why are so many young adults, asks Max Snyder from Economic Collapse, in America living with their parents? According to a stunning Gallup survey that was recently released, nearly three out, of every f three out of every ten adults in the U.S. under the age of 35 are still living at home or with mom and dad. 
It says uh, there's a Pew Research Center analysis census data. 36% of Americans 18 to 31 are still living with their parents. It was the highest level that has ever been recorded. Um, for those that wonder, I moved out at 19. Overall, approximately 25 million U.S. adults are currently living at home with their parents, according to Time magazine. And it asks why, definitely economic conditions. Um, and it mentions too, uh, thankfully, <clears throat> not all of our parents are dying very, very young. <clears throat> so my brother, uh, my mom lives now with my brother since my dad passed on. Uh, that doesn't count as living with your parents. He's actually um, taking care of mom. So um, obviously those people don't count. These are not people that are slacking off or anything. These are people that are doing an awful lot of work. Uh, more Americans than ever before seem to be living in a state of perpetual adolescence. That's true to some degree. Uh, Gallup mentions this. An important milestone in adulthood is establishing independence from one's parents, including finding a job, a place to live, and most a spouse, partner, and starting one's own family. Um, these days I found it to mean uh, how quickly can we get on welfare. However, it says there are potential roadblocks on the path to independence that may force young adults to live with their parents longer, including a weak job market, which we have, the high cost of living, we definitely have, significant college debt, which I will have till I die, and helping care for an elderly or disabled parent, which again, I mean, that, that's, that's just being a good sibling. Unfortunately, it is becoming increasingly difficult for young people to become financially independent. While they are in high school, we endlessly pound into their heads the need to go to college. Then we urge them to take out whatever loans that they will need to pay for it, ensuring them that there will be good jobs which they will be able to choose from loans and then pay them back when they graduate. That's the lie they told to me, as you can tell when I stumble over the sentence because I'm so angry to read it. Um, as I was learning web design. We were outsourcing web design. Uh, thankfully, I also took uh, something I loved. I took the computer side of my major because everyone said to take something responsible. And then I took, of course, music theory, web design, and uh, various other graphics. So that, that's helped me. But, yeah, the, we, outsource the, uh, we outsource the jobs as we, as we teach it to our children these days. Unfortunately, it says it is becoming increasingly difficult for young people to become financially independent. And agree, again, I'm not someone that attacks the young. I, most of my friends are in their 20s. I have very, very, very little in common with people in my generation. My generation are the reason that your bank teller has her eyebrow pierced. We had the world by the cojones, and we gave it back to sell out quicker than the yuppies did. And I clearly am not one of the ones that did. But my generation is the biggest letdown generation I've ever seen. Uh, so, I'm not against the youth. Um, Christelle is 25. But, it's not the youth's fault all the time. A lot of them, I'm, some of the dumbest people I've ever met are in this age bracket. But, a lot of that too is because they were raised, uh, raised really, really bad, again, by a sold out Generation X. Unfortunately, uh, I read that part already. So I'm going to go to these numbers it puts out here from student loan debt in the U.S. The total amount of student loan debt in the United States has risen to a brand new all-time record of $1.08 trillion. Another thing they do, uh, when my ex and I uh, parted ways, I moved. And, uh, you know, people go through personal divorces and separations and things that aren't always so fun. Well, did they ever once try to contact me for these loans when uh, I needed to pay them back? No, not ever. They had no idea where I was because I moved, right, without putting in a change of address. However, the day they defaulted, they found me. Isn't that amazing? They do that so that they, the, what they promise you, if, you're, if you haven't gone to college yet, listen to this and listen to it twice. They will promise you rates of uh, repayment that you will never see. They will rack you with those numbers for the rest of your life. The student loan debt accounted for 3.1% of all consumer debt in 03. Today it accounts for 9.4% of all consumer debt. Well, that was us as we were in school. That's what that was. Uh, in the third quarter of 07, the student loan delinquency rate was 7.06. Today it is up 11.5%. Uh, they'll also, if you do get behind, they'll ask you what you can afford to pay and then charge you more than that. I'm, I'm not kidding. They do this. It says, for those 18 to 29-year-old in that bracket, it is getting even harder to find full-time employment. 
In June of 2012, it goes on 47% of those in that entire age group had a full-time job. One year later, in 2013, only 43.6% of that entire age group had a job. That's a massive loss. That's almost a 4% loss, people, in one year. Um, and it goes on to tell some personal stories. There's some more numbers in there, though, we should get to. Uh, the ratio of what men in the 18 to 29-year-old age bracket are earning compared to what the general population is earning is at an all-time low. And American families that have a head of household that are under the age of 30 have a poverty rate of 37%. Well, I'm 41. Like I said, I am poor when I was 31. This is not a new problem. It's just something now that everybody's realizing wasn't entirely the fault of Gen X. Um, friends, TheGuardian.com, Walmart denies reports saying it is considering a minimum wage increase. Walmart is one of the main reasons that our country is going to hell. Um, I never shop there unless I, I literally, there has to be like emergency of untold proportions for me to go there for anything. Um... I used to work for Yellow Cab, Fred Nero, the cheapest SOB that ever lived, owns it. When you pay people starving wages, society pays for it because those people have to go to welfare. They have no choice. I was never on welfare, but my ex was, who had uh, was born with an intestinal disorder that has no cure, and she couldn't get any insurance. So, I mean, the cheap bosses are part of the problem. Um, why are we fighting Obamacare today? Because of the agreed that we allowed to enter into the system to create a problem that Obama could be presented as a cure for. That's why. Not because it was a good idea, but because these people that are working at Walmart deserve more money. Of course they do. Mainly because they'd otherwise be working at really good jobs 25 years ago if we hadn't sent the crap overseas. I'm sorry, but it's true. Um, I'm just sick of this. I'm, I'm sick of thinking, you know, well, if we pay the people at McDonald's more money, then we won't get a cheeseburger for a dollar. Well, you can give me the cheeseburger for two fifty if I know the person is actually making something they can live on. You know what? This is what got us into this mess. And again, I'm a libertarian. You can, you can do whatever you want. But whatever you want can sometimes lead to the death of our country. And the, 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 the way around it isn't the, uh, the liberal democratic solution of more laws. All that's going to do is create more of a need to cheat. I know, because I was poor, and that's what I had to do. Um, I DJ in an adult club, and I'm a whole lot more moral than I was when I had a legitimate cab driving job. Because my boss was so cheap, I had to pray that somebody wanted to buy drugs so I knew where to take them. That's what paying somebody nothing causes. It takes an honest person like me. Oops. It takes an honest person like me and makes uh, makes it appear that you know you're what makes you makes you dishonest, not even appear, just to eat. So I mean, this is ridiculous. I despise Walmart. Walmart, America's unfortunately largest private employer, denied reports Wednesday that it is looking at supporting an increase in the federal minimum wage. The company played down a report by Bloomberg that said Walmart might consider supporting a raise. Uh, they'll do it when they absolutely have to to look good because they're cheap swines and that's why you should never go there, among other reasons. That's something we're looking at. Whenever there's debates, it's not like we're, we look once and make a decision. We look a few times from other angles. It quoted spokesman David Tavares saying, another Walmart spokesman said Tavares' comments had been taken out of context and that the retailer had not changed his position on the minimum wage. We are looking into it, and as you would expect, any large company would do. This does not mean we have changed our position, she said. Walmart has 1.3 mostly starving, mostly on welfare employees, about 4,000 of whom currently make either a state or federal minimum wage. Do you realize that when Walmart does this, these poor people have no other choice but to go on welfare? And you're paying for them to be on welfare. When they have no choice, they're working. They're working as much as they can. They're doing the best they can. Walmart is making you pay for them to give you stuff that you think is cheaper. And you're paying more in taxes to welfare than you would be if you paid more for the microwave at Walmart. 
Any move by Walmart would likely have major ripple effects and comes amid mounting pressure for an increase. President Obama called for a raise in the minimum wage in his state at the union in his State of the Union speech last month. The president also said that he would increase the hourly rate for federal contractors from 7.25 to 10.10. How very kind of you! Those at the top have done better, he said during last month's State of the Union speech, but average wages have barely budged, inequality has deepened, upward mobility has stalled. Minimum wage, when you present it as such, creates its own problems, and I'm very well aware of it. The trouble is, we need to stop the greed that is in corporate America from being subsidized by you and I, Joe Taxpayer. Friends, if you're in Canton, Ohio, do me a favor and go to the Arcadia Grill, Hawaii, because you're going to get some of the best food that you've ever eaten when you do. Um, I always get the ravioli. They have a full bar there. It's a uh, Bacardi. You know, they know how to make a drink. You're not going to get some little weenie drink. You have to drink six to feel like you had two. No, they're going to make you a good drink. They're going to give you delicious food at a wonderful price. Go to the Arcadia Grill, located on Court Avenue, and tell them Sam I B from the Correct Views sent you there. A few more stories to get to over a zoom, zoom, zoom right in a row. The DailyCaller.com. Krauthammer, the president pretends that this is all settled science. Uh, how many times have we gone over? Man made global warming is a lie. Put a techno beat behind it for me. Washington Post columnist Charles Krauthammer questioned President Barack Obama's new climate change push on Monday, claiming the president pretends that this is settled science, when in reality there is little in the United States can do to reverse global warming emissions. Repeat, when in reality there is little the United States can do to reverse global carbon emissions. Krauthammer spoke on a Fox News panel along with the Hill's A.B. Stoddard and the Weekly Standard Steve Hayes about the White House new push on global warming. The columnist warned about the dangers of crafting policy based on an unsettled scientific theory. Amen! Especially when that theory admits that there is little that one country can do to halt runaway greenhouse gases, which are not warming the planet. Climategate.com, look it up before you start leaving stupidity on my comment line. The president pretends that this is all settled science, he began. Newton's laws were considered settled for 2,000 years until a patent clerk named Albert Einstein in Switzerland turned them over in a single paper in 1903. And that was pretty settled science. The idea that this is all settled is absurd. Thank God for common sense. However, even if you accept it, then you look at what he did last week, Krauthammer continued. He wants to pretend that these individual weather events are caused by global warming, which is supposedly the settled, scientist, settled science. And the New York Times, which is not exactly a right-wing rag, <clears throat> it says that there is no, repeat, no, that's none for you Usher fans, definitive evidence that it is causing the drought in the West Coast as the rest of the nation freezes. In fact, and I'm quoting here, he said, the most recent computer projections suggest that the world warms, it should be getting wetter, not drier, out there in the winter. So if you accept the settled science of climate change, you have to do the exact opposite effect of what we saw in California. So the arrogance of this is rather appalling, Kronheimer claimed, but worse is the application of it to our economy, which, thanks to Obama, is in just wonderful condition, as you could tell by my last story. All of this is driven by the ideology, which in and of itself is a matter of almost theology, as shutting the coal industry, hurting us in mass transit, and getting us all out of large cars. Amen. Uh, there's some true wisdom spoken there. Two more stories, friends. The Washington Times. Secession movement in New York pushes for Big Apple to split from upstate. I'm happy about this. I would even be happy if one of the splits decided they were going to leave the Union. Because we are not living in the United States. And if a state did secede, depending on where it was, I don't trust the West Coast because of my first story, Depending on where it was, I would contemplate going there, or working there, or at least being there for a while just to pay uh, my fair share and help them get started. Um, if, a, if a 
states seceded from the Union, and that's not what they're saying here. Um, they want to make their own state, but hypotheticalville here. If they left the Union, I would be really interested if they took the Constitution that we used to use and used it there, I'd be tempted to move there. A step in the right direction there. It'll wake some people up. I know the media speaks, mediaspeaks.com. Uh, they were talking about it on our last Saturday show. When Frank Sinatra sang New York, New York, he may have been on to something. A movement is afoot to split New York into two regions, upstate and downstate, to acknowledge the gaping philosophical differences and improv representation. Sam, why do you always report on this? Because I'm a, one of those strange people. I love large cities. I live in Canton, Ohio, and right now I'm not a good time for me to move. I hate little towns. I want to live in New York City or Los Angeles. Well, TEPCO, GE, who brought great things to life, ruined uh, Los Angeles. You can't live there now without shortening your life, thanks to them. So New York is likely where I want to go. And I don't like the way it's being run, and I think this would be a wake-up call to New York City to pull away from what it's, uh, what it's been representing in terms of uh, liberalism and uh, socialism in the last 25 years. I've lived all of my life in upstate and downstate, have two different philosophies of life, said John Bergner, an Albany County resident, organizer of the Two New Yorks effort. It seems like there's always a conflict. Campaigns for secession or the 51st state <clears throat> have been on the rise since the 2012 presidential elections. See California, Colorado, and Maryland. But the New York, more, New York movement, it says, has a twist. Instead of splitting New York into two distinct states, advocates want one state controlled by two anonymous regional governments. <clears throat> the state would retain a token presence funded by the 3% sales tax and would remain united for federal purposes such as electoral college and congressional seats. But the power of all state matters would be transferred to the regions. You know what? I'm very, very happy to see this. And then they go on and mention the history of uh, secession. You can look it up there at the Washington Slimes. Friends, uh, I I'm happy to see that because it's going to be a wake-up call. There are a growing number of us libertarians who have had it. And I'm happy to see this happening. Um, Dailycaller.com. Wikipedia gets, uh, well, this Wikipedia story, I should say, Wins the dumb day of the day? That's right. We are going to be bringing back the dunce cap of the month. I have to do January and February's and probably Marches or whatever all at one time. I might be sending out six at once. But the dunce cap of the month is coming back. And, uh, of course, we've moved on to always having the dumb day of the day. If you saw the title of this posting, you saw that I stole Rush Limbaugh's feminazi uh, name. Um, that's because while I'm not a Rush worshipper, he does have a point when he talks about these crazy people. And I'm not talking about people that are wanting equal rights for, rights for women. But I'm talking about people that don't know we already have equal rights for women. We're all being hosed together. Wikipedia is very masculine, so feminists pledge to fix it. Ah, uh, yeah, I've been pledged to ruin it. Mm, flower, give me a site that works. A Drudge Report. I don't know about you, but Drudge Report never works for me. It keeps refreshing and stuff I, it drives me insane. Wikipedia works. Leave it alone. Feminist feminazi groups, thank you again, Rush, at more than a dozen universities are planning to participate in another mass edit Wikipedia day because for free volunteer encyclopedia website is obnoxiously horribly sexist, says these bats. Sarah Starch, a Wikipedia contributor and researcher for the Wikimedia Foundation, said the problem isn't just that most Wikipedia users are male. Like, that's a problem. The layout of the website is itself very masculine, she said. No, it just means it works! It's aesthetically very masculine in its design. No, it works! Look at the flowers in a tree. It looks like a 13-year-old girl's MySpace account when you're done with it. <clears throat> the average Wikipedia user is a well-educated white male. He must be the Antichrist. Well-educated white males have been writing history and the story of history since ancient times, and I would argue largely correctly. To fix this, feminazis at colleges around the country are launching another Wikipedia editathon. Next week, feminazis are encouraged to change, rewrite, the online encyclopedia to make it less masculine, according to campus reform, that is to lie. 
And again, I'm not saying men are right. I'm saying right is right, wrong is wrong, and the community, be it male or female, can fix any error on Wikipedia, regardless of their gender, their age, or their race. The event is a follow-up to last year's similar edit-a-thon when feminist sympathizers were called to edit the feminist thought into Wikipedia articles. That's like uh, editing LSD into a baby bottle. Great idea. It's not like my life's passion to make Wikipedia feminazi, but it's been really surprising. And there's this whole underground world that isn't aware of the people who are dedicated to editing Wikipedia, said Sarah, Sarah South, the event organizer and Wikipedia ruiner, in a statement to Bitch Magazine, because they're the only people that would uh, actually give her any space. The beauty of Wikipedia is that it's a public institution. People have the ability to change it and lie and ruin it. Luckily, the rest of the community will likely fix it, you feminazi. Friends, you are listening to The Correct Views. Thank you for doing so. Please donate to the show if you can. Go to the correct views at hotmail.com. All money that you give to me goes towards a better show. I have a nice camera, which is exactly what saves me when uh, Google hoses me. Good night, friends. God bless, and uh, go to the mediaspeaks.com.